Okay. Uh, in our first class, for anybody who missed, got a pendulum over there going back and forth, back and forth, and forth. I was counting out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight with the pendulum. I was counting somewhat slower. The pendulum takes about a second. So I was counting on kind of an eight second interval. And we had people sitting around kind of in a circle. And uh, they were recorded every time I hit their count. Some people were recording when I hit one, some people on five. Okay. So we have um needle pen. Okay. We have the a rotating system here. I put a penny on one end. So you kind of see when the penny is pointing at you. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but there it is. Okay. And I put this in rotation. That's all good bearing, so it's going to rotate for a while. Now, every time I hit whatever number it is each individual was counting on, they made a mark. Uh, every time Penny was pointing, they made a different mark. And we can see we expect that this thing's slowing down. So that's going to appear on our marks. Okay, so you would make, okay, right now you would make a check mark because it's pointing at you. Get a check mark. Check mark, but in between, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you're marking on five, you make a different mark on five. So I count one, two, three, four, five, you make a mark, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, mark, six, seven, eight. Of course, I'm going to count five, not mark. Okay. And we did that around a circle, people indicated where they were in the circle and indicated their series of marks. Um, if you weren't here, if you have additional practice, I'm gonna ask you to do this using a video. This time you're gonna pause, okay? You're gonna pause the video and every second that's a multiple of four, you're going to make a mark, like a vertical dash. I'm sorry, yeah. And every time this thing is pointing at you, you're going to make a check mark. Now, this thing will point at you between seconds. Okay? So, if you're counting seconds, Again, every time the number of seconds is multiple four, you make a vertical mark. Every time this is pointing at you, you make a check mark. And if in the process of making a check mark, you get the number of seconds, well, you're able to pause the video. You're going to be able to get this pretty aptly. Okay, so I'm going to give this a spin and let's see what happens.
Now those last four marks, things no longer completing the circle, is actually in what we call simple harmonic motion, like I assume, where it's oscillating back and forth. Keep those marks because you want to interpret them and make yourself a note on your data that it was for the last four marks, check marks or whatever, in simple harmonic motion. And then I'll tell you what to do with the data, which is going to be a little different with what people in class do. But then you're going to write up what you did, and they're going to write up what they did, and you're going to understand what they did, and they're going to understand what you did. Okay? It's going to be fun. Okay, now what we have here is an example. These are swings of the pendulum, these vertical lines. So one swing, two swings, three swings, four swings, five, and so forth. Where you start at zero, one, two, at the end. Adjust your scale as you wish. And these are check marks, they're actually kind of Bs, uh, but they indicate alignment of the pendulum, uh, of the uh, rotating strap, the rotating beam, okay? Uh, so that's where you would mark when the beam is pointing at you. And it's always going to be between two swings of the pendulum, because the swing of the pendulum is completed in an instant. And this thing is pointing exactly at you at an instant. In two instants that occur in two different systems can never be exactly the same because of the denseness of the real numbers. Two points generated by two different systems can't land on top of each other because points have zero energy. Short longer. In terms of your knowledge of calculus and other things. But move on. They're going to be in between. What I said in class was if you're not sure whether the thing was on this side or this side of a mark because it was really close, make your best judgment. And if you just can't make up your mind, flip a coin. Okay. There's uncertainty in the data. Okay. Now, see anything wrong with this data? Oh, it gets faster. Oh, whoa, whoa I'm sorry. Uh, oh, uh, there's somebody out in the hall, you know, trying to answer the question. You know, there's nobody in here. Okay, so people are making comments on whether these things are speeding up or slowing down. If you can tell, and yeah, that, that question, you know, could it have been into oscillations? Well, in at least one case, that's possible. But it's not marked here. Now, in the video where, you know, I just did beginning of class, uh, for people who we're here when we did this. Uh, I did tell them the last four oscillations, or your last four check marks of the oscillations. Okay. So what we're saying is, again, here to here is one unit of time, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. There's a question whether this is possible. We just get one in here, but now you get two in here, you get one. Okay. And it might or might not be possible, I know. And I'm not going to say, so I want you to kind of think about that. Maybe put a little timeline there and see how that timeline could be divided up. See if this could happen. Okay. Maybe, maybe not. It's worth thinking about. Because um, it's very relevant to the idea of measurement. Okay, so there's differences between here and here. Now, people did generally good graphs, okay? The most common error I saw on the graphs, and it's an easily understood error, is that uh, one of these graphs, is in, at least one of these graphs is increasing for one of the systems, or maybe both of the systems. Okay, 
whereas at least one of the graphs, one of the systems is decreasing. Okay. So think about what would be increasing and what would be decreasing. Um, as I saw, it's very easy to confuse position with speed. Okay. And to do a speed graph where you really try to do a position graph. Don't say anything. If it's going to reveal anything, that was good. Yeah, you, of course, I can't tell whether you're making a sound or not because of my hearing. Uh, <laughs> uh, hang on a minute. We'll, we'll let you talk. You think maybe there's more important stuff you could have done, especially like with the graphs, or you want to correct one of the graphs. Yeah, just draw it out, hand it to me next time. If you want me to give you the feedback, okay? See if everybody, and I might even ask you to just do a couple of quick graphs next time for the same sort of thing. Or I might ask you to draw one where this thing is increasing and one where that thing is decreasing. If this other thing is decreasing, when the other thing is increasing and stuff like that. And I'm not being very specific about that because that's sure what I'm going to ask. I know, I can touch it out. But, um, okay. So, now, what's going on with the system? Do the graphs. So, that's all we're going to talk about on that right now. But I want to now get into the whole idea of motion. And I want to draw a graph here that indicates. versus time. Now, how fast is speed as opposed to velocity? Velocity means how fast and in what direction. Okay? Does that make sense? Everybody kind of know that? Difference between speed and velocity? Okay. If not, your text will tell you. But, you know, if I say that thing's moving it, 48 miles an hour. You know how it's moving? No, you don't know what direction. If it's on the interstate, then hopefully it's either going up the interstate or down the interstate, because you've got perpendicular to the interstate at 48 miles an hour, you're probably in big trouble. Okay? Or if you have a significant component of your velocity that's not parallel to the interstate, either you're going to correct that or you're going to roll. <laughs> okay? Eventually, you're going to run into something. Okay, and so yeah, you know, velocity, direction of your motion is important. If you're going up the interstate and your velocity is positive, and you can choose is this positive or negative, okay? Once you've chosen that, then the velocity in this direction is negative. Your velocity in that direction has two components one in this direction and one in this direction. You're moving this way at the same time as you're moving this way, so you're going in that direction. Does that make sense? So, you know, you kind of want to digest that. Um, and we'll flesh that out. You know, you're going to have assignment vectors and you know, probably some of it over the weekend. Okay. Anyhow, how fast versus time? Um, but let's say how fast versus time looks like this. Okay. Then what would the graph of position versus time look like? I'm gonna say it look it would be some kind of line. Some kind of line or curve. The line's kind of it, it could be a line coming. Be... So the word line is a little ambiguous, but yeah. 
Yeah. Some kind of yes. one dimensional here. Didn't it stop recording and just restart the recording? I was I was like imagining it like as something going. I don't know. The damn thing doesn't. I'm sorry. Oh, I got a bad word on the recorder too. Thank you, Zoom, for not indicating whether we're recording or not. Get it straight. I'm leaving Zoom as soon as I find an alternative. Take that. <laughs> okay. Now, what I think we were doing is this is how fast versus time. The question is, what is position versus time going to look like, right? That's something you should have learned to do in calculus. Because you've got to think through these things. It's nothing but derivatives and integrals. And can you sketch the integral of something from its curve? Can you sketch the derivative from the curve? Uh, it's something if you don't know how to do, you really should get good at it. So I ask everybody to close their eyes and trace out the shape of this curve. I got several gestures that look like they probably should at least be R-rated. Um, <laughs> so uh, y'all had your eyes closed, so you don't have that image, but I'll never get over it. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Will you then close your eyes and trace out what you think this curve might look like? There's more than one possible answer, but there's one that probably people will converge to. So close your eyes. We're still recording, even though Zoom won't tell me. Log on you, Zoom. I got to move the cursor in order to see. Well, I can't move the cursor when I'm over there in the camera. Morons. Okay. Seriously, no. Close your eyes and sketch me a curve. I saw some good ones. Yeah. Trace it forward, trace it backward. Go from left to right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to leave you to think about it. You might want to review a little bit of calculus. Um, you know, the part where you relate curves to curves. Um, so think about that until the next time. But let's go ahead and do it analytically. Now, let's change this, not to how fast, but to velocity. Because there are two possible answers down here. Okay? You don't know whether you're going this fast, the positive direction, or the negative direction, which means your graph here could be above the axis or below the axis. You don't know which direction is which. So, two possible shapes. Okay, now here we've got it. Let's see. Let's take two points on this graph. Now, what can we do with those two points to figure out? I'm going to back up. A little harder to go from time to position than it is. It's easy to go from uh, velocity. Acceleration than it is velocity and position. So I'm going to do the easy thing first. Let's go to the graph of I'm going to relabel these graphs. That shouldn't cause any confusion. This is different now. Using the same graph, but giving it a different name. Call this position. And I'm going to call this velocity. Now we'll discuss this for a minute, but think before I hopefully pause Zoom, which is hopefully recording, but it won't tell me. Um, what's the meaning of this point? And what's the meaning of this point? Each point has coordinates. But to the coordinates, these two points will tell you that allows you to say something at least about velocity. Okay, we have some discussion, came around to some 
pretty good conclusions. After a few minutes, I heard the word rape. Okay, that's good. And I think maybe a little before that, I heard the word slope. Yeah. They ultimately measure the same thing. Slope is a rate, okay? And a rate, an instantaneous rate is a limiting value of slopes. Okay, velocity is, as curse, if you can't read it, it's ROC stands for rate of change. I don't want to write out all those words. And I like to show up beauty in my cursive, which never looks the same twice. Okay, velocity is the rate of change. Got to go back to printing. It's not everybody can read cursive. That's the local position. Okay. Velocity is rate of change of position. And to delta y over delta t, safety position is y. It could be x, it could be delta x over delta t. If you use the t on this axis, you don't have to use x, so you can use x for position. You're going to see that. Change of time, delta y over delta t. It's all this. Y for position, V for velocity. Okay. I'm not going to spell it all out. Go back and think through what your calculus means. Okay. I care less about whether you're doing your derivatives care correctly than about understanding the kind of thing I'm talking about here. Okay? Well enough that it becomes automatic. The derivatives you have to take in this course and the integrals the second semester are just derivatives and integrals of sines and cosines and polynomials and simple functions. Okay? Very easy. Very seldom get a difficult derivative or a difficult integral. I think I said that last time. You're not going to have to use integration by parts. Or if you do, it won't be that much of a disaster if you mess it up. Okay. Uh, but you're going to have to learn to write the integrals. You know, what integral represents this thing. Okay. And I don't assume you're good at that. Okay. You might be, and that's that's great. Uh, but people typically aren't very good at that when they come out. So he's he's into that. But I want to lay the definitions out here for you right now. Okay. So what does that mean in terms of a graph? Well, I'll do this a little more quickly. That means you take this part of the graph and magnify it a little bit. If these points are close together, then the curve from here to here is nearly a straight line, right? Now, the curve might not actually be a straight line. So here's the actual curve. 
but here's a straight line between the two points. And we're not concerned with the curve. We know that this straight line, to the extent that these points are close together, is going to be close to the curve. It's going to be a good approximation of the curve. And if we take the limit, it's going to match the slope, the tangent line. And you're going to want to replace some of this. You pick up on all my words. Maybe the transcript is good. When artificial intelligence started getting really good, the transcripts you get through YouTube started to get really bad. I don't know what was going on there. I think maybe they've now improved. They used to be pretty good. And for a while, they, they were just garbled. Um, and I haven't really checked the transcripts recently. Okay. Okay, back to this. Check this. The, the, the things I'm saying are important things to be thinking about. You're going to be sorting through them probably all year and get better and better at it so that you'll understand the language of the engineering or whatever it is you study next. Okay. Um, okay. Anyhow, here it is. Now, how do you define the slope? Well, you have the change in y the change in t in a box I put the slope delta y over delta t it's got a box around it it's not the length of this line it's the slope the length of this line is the square root of delta y squared plus delta t squared by the Pythagorean theorem interesting through that um, but that's that's going to be important in multivariable calculus because you do line intervals and stuff, but we're not going to talk much about that. Um, so the length of this line is important, but probably not until you take multivariable calculus, although some of you have already taken it. But I know Nathan has. Anybody else? How many of you are taking differential equations or have taken it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll say some things that are. You actually see differential equations in first semester calculus. Sometimes they're called that, but you forget they were called. Sometimes you forget they exist. Okay. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll use the terminology, but it's going to be it's easy application. So kind of easy to see. Okay. Well, anyhow. Okay. So we've got this. Now, what's happening then to the slopes? The slopes are decreasing, right? So we conclude that the velocity is decreasing. Okay? That makes sense. I might have been about to do something really stupid. So thank you for that correction. Stupid if I do it, not stupid if you do it at this point. Okay. Uh, so I was about to say, well, then the velocity curve looks like this, but no, the velocity is negative. So slopes are negative and increasing towards zero. Is that clear? Think about it. You can have a graph that looks like this. Now we're out of time. Uh, just quickly, we're going to be scheduling labs on pretty much on alternate Fridays. Um, we could schedule one for this Friday. It's Labor Day weekend. It's okay with me if you want to do it Labor Day weekend, but more likely people would prefer next Friday. But uh, if I'm wrong about that, tell me. <laughs> 